now, despite a year of disruption and school closures during the pandemic, there were unprecedented A-level results yesterday. 45% of UK entries being awarded an A or A-star grade this summer. So results this time were determined by teachers' estimates rather than exams, sparking concerns over grade inflation. Shadow Education Secretary Kate Green joins us now. The last thing we want to do is make students who work so hard in incre incredibly stressful circumstances to get their grades, to feel like somehow their grades aren't deserved, aren't worth it, aren't accurate, aren't right. However, there is an extraordinary increase this year, isn't there? Is that fair? I absolutely agree with you that we want to congratulate all these young people on the grades that they've achieved in the most challenging of circumstances. And I think what these grades show is the young people's resilience and commitment to their learning and that they, they've really made exceptional efforts and, and their grades reflect that. There are some inequities in the results that we saw yesterday. They're not new, but some of those inequities have grown. Uh, for example, with um, the most disadvantaged children, those on free school meals or black children or, or those from deprived areas uh, being outperformed by their better off counterparts. We've also seen at the other uh, end of the spectrum uh, that pupils in private schools continue to get much higher grades and they've seen the biggest increase again in A-level grades uh, this year. Um, some of those injustices and inequities, I think, are due to the way in which different schools apply the grading system this year, uh, because it was very much left up to schools to decide exactly how they would do it. Uh, but they also, of course, reflect underlying inequalities that have been there for, for a long time in our education system. So the problems and the inequalities are the same. They're just potentially more magnified. So the government did the best it could didn't it? Under the circumstances, you could argue for those youngsters going through it. What specifically would have Labour done differently faced with this challenge? Well, first of all, we would have been able to tell schools and teachers much, much earlier what the assessment system was going to be this year. Remember, right up until Christmas, Gavin Williamson was saying exams would definitely go ahead. Everyone was pleading with them to come forward with a plan B. Sorry to interrupt, Kate Green. Sorry to interrupt. Can I just ask, this? why would you have been able to make that decision sooner? Is it just that you would have forced yes, would the have. department to Absolutely do that? It was just dithering, yeah, because... you think, by Gavin Williamson? Yeah, of course I do, because we all knew last summer that the exam system in 2020 had proven um, not to be workable during the pandemic. And we all knew that the pandemic was not going away at the beginning of the academic year in September, that all the indicators were that we were going to see um, a rise in infections and potentially more disruption to children and young people's education. So we were saying as far back as last September, you need to bring forward a plan B if exams can't go ahead. By Christmas, Gavin Williamson was still saying they definitely would go ahead. At the beginning of January, you turned and said they wouldn't, but we didn't know until March. Schools didn't know until the end of the spring term exactly what would be put in place and how they would be expected to assess students. Teachers weren't involved. There was no collaboration with teachers in designing uh, the assessment process that, that was applied this summer. Um, and we also, of course, saw that the system was very much left to individual schools to apply it in, in their okay. own way. So you got a huge range of ways in which young people were assessed, some doing lots of exams, some doing very few, sure. some seeing the papers in advance, some not, yeah. and so on. So if you'd, if you'd brought in a, uh, a system sooner, as you were saying that you would have done, you would have been able to do that and you would have done that, do you think that the inflation wouldn't have happened like it has? Do you think we would have seen a more balanced sort of set of results compared to last year, where, of course, there was a huge inflation from the previous year, which was the, which was the last pre-COVID year, of course? Or we already, all who always have seen this, because actually it seems like teacher assessment of students and being able to see, and my son's been through his GCSE, so I know just how many assessments there were. It wasn't just one exam at the end of the year that he and his, his uh, uh, fellow classmates sat. There were lots and lots of them. Do you think that actually that assessment is maybe a fairer way of doing it? And at this end of term exam that is the GCSE, it's probably not the best way of doing it because if they get more than one crack at it, then they're going to get better results and actually be rewarded for the hard work they're putting in. I think what's really important, whether you're talking about ongoing assessment or whether you're talking about a terminal exam, 
is that it's fair to all students. And that means you need a process uh, of you know, standard approaches of both to carrying out the assessments and to applying the grades. This year, um, there wasn't that um, standard approach to carrying out the assessments. I'm interested your son took a lot of um, tests and in other schools we've been told of um, young people perhaps only taking one or two exams. Um, in some they see the papers beforehand and some they didn't. So there, there really was um, quite a wide variation in the way students were assessed this year. And I think with more time and we would have collaborated with teachers and education professionals to design the system, we would have, be, we would have built in um, a process of um, creating standard and more um, equitable means of carrying out right. the assessment. Well, that, that's hindsight, albeit you are very clear that Labour was saying that from a long time before the decision was finally made. So hindsight and a little bit of foresight. We've got a clear vision for next year, haven't we? We're standing here in August uh, thinking about what happens for... Mm. Then sort of by his son, my daughter, doing GCSEs next summer. She's going back to school in September, not knowing if it's an exam, not knowing if anything that, you know, that, that's happened last year and how it's going to impact. And, of course, the same for A-level students, standard students and higher students. They have a different system in Scotland, but the youngsters are in a confused period. Can Labour be very, very clear about what they are going to do or if they were in charge for students next year. Can you say now whether it's exams? Can you say now whether it's teacher assessments? I hope we'll be able to conduct exams fairly next summer. And I know from talking to students that they hope so too, that students so what feel... what would affect that, that hope? Because I think the government well, hopes the so as well, doesn't it? Affect that so, hope, so, it? So it will be circumstances and that's the government's problem. So I'm just trying to get clear uh, what Labour's process and decision making is that's different to the government's because uh, we're in a position now not to, to, to criticise in hindsight, aren't we? We're in a position for you to be very clear about Labour's policy. Just to be clear about hindsight, proposals were put forward to the government by teachers, by Labour and others months ago. Yeah, no, it's I not acknowledge just that. I'm but talking about going well, forward. Yeah. Well, you're not acknowledging it. You're rather accusing me of only saying these things in hindsight. No, I didn't. I said very, very specifically that you said, and you made it clear in this interview, that you were proposing this back in September. So yeah. I wasn't. I'm but, saying we now okay. have an opportunity to not go over old ground, but to be very clear about the future for your departments, your shadow department, and for Labour? Yeah, so I think you are absolutely right to say that your daughter and others are need to know when they go back to school in September what the system is going to be. And I hope it will be a system which enables exams to take place fairly next summer. But it is going to be important again for next year that we have a plan B because we don't know what's going to happen to the pandemic. It's possible there'll be new variants, more disruption to education. And we also know, of course, that for students going into year 11 and year 13, they've already suffered one year of disrupt disruption in the first year of their studies for GCSE, BTEC or A-level. So we're also saying that things like uh, as we suggested for this year, in fact, more choice in exam papers so that students are only assessed on uh, what they've been able to study um, and um, looking at things like allowing them perhaps to take revision aids into the exam should all be uh, part of the contingency planning. Now, we don't know at all what the government uh, plans. Um, we have said that the government needs to come forward with that clarity by the 1st of September. Currently, they're suggesting that schools might know, not know until next spring what sort of uh, questions and, and subjects would be covered in, in examination papers. And it's very, very difficult for teachers to teach and, and students to learn in that climate of uncertainty. So I think we would like to see that plan brought forward uh, at the beginning of the academic year at the start of September. OK, everyone would, would applaud that, having a clear idea and a clear plan. But of course, we know it is a pandemic. Who knows what's going to happen? But an idea of where they're going to be going would be a positive all round. Um, the students that have got their A-levels, record numbers of university places have been achieved uh, and, and hopefully they will be going to university if they can get into those universities. We've seen that medical schools are offering £10,000 for some students to defer because they've had such a huge increase or to move to a different medical school. Is university still worth it for some of those skills like dentistry, like being a doctor, being a lawyer? Understandably, you need to have that degree. But in some of those other degrees, do you think it's still worth it? And would you be pushing, if you were in government, for universities to insist on face-to-face -face lectures rather than, as we're hearing yesterday, 20 of the 24 Russell Group universities saying they are going to carry on doing online lectures? 
Well, I want any young person who wants to and can benefit from a university education to have the chance of that excellent university education. Um, and I also think that it's really important that we continue to invest in our higher education sector because it is one of the jewels and the, the crown of this country. And, and we attract a lot of international students who bring income and, and, and new ideas and culture to our country. Um, but I also uh, just want to say about this issue of face-to-face -face and remote mm. teaching, that most universities will be offering predominantly face-to-face -face teaching and the remote teaching will be to supplement that. Now, for some subjects, it will need to be pretty well all face-to-face. -face. You know, you can't really do medicine, dentistry, creative design and so on um, remotely. Um, but we do know that students say that they, they like to have material also available to them online. They can go back and look at it again if they've not fully understood something the first time. Um, they can... Um, watch at a time that's convenient to them. So I think it's about getting the blend right between the remote and the face-to-face -face teaching. And that's what universities very, very much have been planning for. Last year, of course, um, students were told by the government to stay away from campus. So teaching did have to go online. And that meant that many students felt that they, they didn't really get a proper university experience, either in terms of the, the teaching that they received or in the wider social aspects yeah. of being at university. But they still had to pay um, full fees, so didn't they? It, uh, yeah, and they did, and I was I was just going to um, actually make address that point, and because in in Wales, where um, we have um, the Welsh Labour government, um, a significant hardship fund was put in place to to support those students financially. The the fund that was put in place by the Westminster government for students here uh, in England was much much less generous. So we we really do need to be fair to students, but we also need to make sure that our university sector can can continue to thrive. Um, and continue to educate our young people for, um, you know, a very uncertain and perhaps rather challenging future. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have Good to leave it there. Uh, Shadow Education Secretary Kate Green, thanks for joining us.